Welcome back to our special investigation, Suicide Behind Bars. Now, mandates have been handed down from the state to Nassau County that could have prevented the loss of at least some of these lives. So why then has nothing been done? Well, that very question is being raised by the NYCLU in the form of a petition to enforce what the state has been recommending for two decades. And for more on this, we're now pleased to bring in our next guest, Corey Stoughton, who is the senior staff attorney at the NYCLU and has a petition pending at the New York State Supreme Court on this very issue. This didn't come out of left field, right? That's exactly right. This has been a problem decades in the making, unfortunately. Uh, it was really only just as the Nassau County Jail emerged from federal supervision that conditions there started deteriorating again and we saw this recent spate of deaths in, of people in custody that prompted us to take a look at what was going on inside that jail. You've received unsolicited calls for I understand as many as 200 inmates there. Just how bad um, are the conditions at this place that don't come off even the page in black and white? Well, the real tragedy here is that people are dying. When you incarcerate people, there need to be basic services for people with serious medical and mental health conditions. And when you don't have that, people, unfortunately, lose their lives. Uh, you, in part in the petition, say that on the part of the Nassau County Jail, there's been a failure to provide appropriate medical treatment, including denial of needed medications, failure to treat individuals with special needs. In the report, you talk about Lily crutches and wheelchairs being taken away, refusal to examine patients who say they're ill or injured, failure to provide needed surgeries, and also a failure to provide follow-up care after an inmate is on suicide watch. If somebody at trial, um, before they're sent over to the jail, there's an acknowledged psychiatric issue, how does it the jail not know, or is it the jail knows, but they either don't have the wherewithal or the intent to do something about it when they come in their doors? Every inmate that comes into the door of a jail gets, has to be sat down and examined by someone to screen them for these problems. <clears throat> and as you say, they're often problems that are evident right on the face of a person. You don't need to be a PhD in psychology to understand that an Iraq war vet who comes in on the circumstances that that particular veteran did might have PTSD and might need special uh, attention. And so, the, you know, that that screening is a critically important and one of the things we're concerned about is that that might not be happening in an effective way. Is the problem here begin um, really with the county executive because after one of the litany of suicides that we had Mr. Mangano was asked about it and he said and I'm gonna quote directly the fact is if someone's intending on taking their life there's very little you can do. Is he communicating the message to the folks at the facility hey they're gonna do what they're gonna do and there's nothing we can do about it? There's quite a lot correctional facilities can do and must do to address these kinds of medical and mental health issues in their inmate population. You know, you take, for example, this young man who most recently committed suicide who was arrested on a traffic offense. Uh, there's no doubt that what he did was serious and that he needed to face the consequences of the decisions he made that led him to that situation. But you look at him and many, many other people in the Nassau County Jail, and remember, these are not convicted, for the most part, not convicted criminals. Most of the people in that jail are awaiting trial on some charge, often relatively minor, nonviolent offenses. Why is the county still allowed to act with impunity if everybody agrees they're not doing the right thing and people are dying and they got a bad record? Why is it still, well, we'll see if they get to it, why aren't they mandated under some form of penalty if they don't? There's relatively little oversight of them, which is really why it's incumbent upon the people of Nassau County to stand up and say, look, uh, our legislature in the past has recognized this problem and implemented a change to our county ch charter that says there should be an independent oversight board. And so this action that we have filed is a step towards making sure that there is some kind of accountability for the sheriff's department and for the county uh, when it comes to the running of the Nassau County Jail. Just explain that beyond the principle of this, practically this is stupid because the county residents are going to end up having to pay for all these suits that are coming. That at the end of the day, if you don't do the right thing or just the decent thing here, as county residents, they're going to have to go in their pockets to pay for all the lawsuits that are coming. Because the truth is it costs a lot of money to keep a guy in jail. And we keep way, way too many people in jail. And if there are few, fewer people in jail, there would be more resources to make sure that those jails, the people who should be there, are not 
are not, you know, being dehumanized, are getting their basic medical care that they're entitled to under our Constitution. And we would, we would be a safer and more humane place. Corey, I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Care or lack of care for inmates at the Nassau County Jail is being blamed for the suicide deaths. With recommendations from the state on record, why has nothing been done? Well, we now pose that question to the longest serving legislator in Nassau County, Judy Jacobs. Ms. Jacobs, thanks very much for a few minutes. I appreciate it. Thank you, Richard. It's a pleasure. Everything I've read, a board I'm of visitors sorry. was supposed to be put in place because of all the problems that the jail had so bad that the feds had to get involved before the spate of suicides we've seen in the last couple of years. Why is there still no board of visitors or really some accountability or oversight about a jail that obviously needs it? It's a bipartisan question that really needs a bipartisan answer as to why three administrations have not established it. Uh, we've been trying to get the county executive to talk, and he won't talk to us. And the only thing I can see from him on the record is he wanted to privatize the place, and I think by most accounts it hadn't exactly gone too well. And moreover, he says if people are going to take their own lives, if they're going to commit suicide, there's really not much you can do. I don't see any leadership from the county executive on this. Have you heard him give you any rationale that he's got this thing under control? Uh, we are not in the majority any longer. Uh, we were for 10 years, but we're not now. I have, we don't have the power to call a hearing of the legislature during which people could be answerable to the legislators as to exactly what you're asking. Who told the county executive, or the sheriff for that matter, that they were to cut funding here for training for suicide prevention or to cut down even on staff? Was that something that the legislator decided? No, no, it wasn't saying the legislature decided, but there's, its logic dictates that when you're lessening the amount of employees blatantly straight across the board and you're not taking into consideration what the ramifications could be, well, you might be leave, leaving yourself open to problems occurring in any department, not only the jail in Nassau County. And that's the situation the county is finding itself in right now. Legislator Judy Jacobs, I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we've heard a lot about the disturbing situation at the Nassau County Correctional Center, and yet while mandates for change have been laid out by the state, still nothing is happening. And we can only imagine how devastating that must be for those families who now have one less loved one at the table.